In this example video, we'll be looking at the sine rule. Now the sine rule, like the cosine rule, is used for non-right angled triangles. Of course, they could also be used for right angled triangles. But for right angled triangles, we tend to use the trig ratios or the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. But for these non-right angle triangles, we're using the sine or cosine rules, depending on the values that you have and where they're actually placed for side and angles. So let's look at how we determine when we use a sine rule. Now, based on the formula that we have here, we're seeing the side A over the sine of the angle it faces is equal to the side B divided by the sine of the angle it, that this particular side B faces, which is actually equal to the side C divided by the sine of the angle that side C faces. Now we have side A here and angle A here. All we're saying is that the side facing this particular angle, okay? That's why we use the same letter. In other words, this is angle A. So where is side A? Side A faces it. So side A is actually here, which is the same as saying side what? Side BC or side CB. So angle face its side. Now when I say BC, notice I didn't mention A. So this is actually side A. So side BC, is the same thing as saying side side A. And of course, if this is angle C, then this is side C down here. If this is angle C, this is side C down here because the angle face its side. So side BA, so side, so side BA is the same thing as saying um, side C. And of course, finally, angle B faces side B, which is the same thing as saying side AC. I didn't mention B when I say AC, so we're talking about side B. Let's look at values. Let's assume that we know this angle to be 60 degrees. This side we do not know. This angle we know, let's say this is actually 50 degrees. And this side we actually know to be uh, 10 units. And we're asked to actually find the length of side A. Notice that we can actually make an X out of this. So Let's look at it this way. So we have an X right here. You notice? At the end of this line, we have one value known and the other end, one value unknown. So I call that the half pair. So this will be our half pair. Okay, because A is unknown while A, angle A, that is, is known. Now we need a full pair. We need a full pair. So let's go to the other line that helps us to make the X. At both ends of the line, we have known values. Hence, this line has our full pair. Okay, so the 50 degrees, that's angle B is known. And 10 units, that means side B is known. So we can actually take these two uh, terms or the, for both sides of the equation. So we're going to have a divided by sine of angle A equals B over sine of angle B. And of course, this implies we can use sine rule. We have one unknown in this equation here. So A is what we're trying to find. So this could be A divided by the sine of angle A. So A divided by the sine of the angle it faces, 60 degrees. B is 10. So let's replace B with 10 over the sine of the angle that B faces, which is 50. So sine of 50 degrees. And then in order to find A, we can get rid of this sixth sine of 60. We can actually do it several ways, but let's say we actually transpose the sine 60 degrees from one side in the denominator to the other side in the numerator. So what we'll have is actually that A is equal to, let's put about the 10 here. Let's put the sine 50 here. But now once we transpose the sine 60, it moves from the denominator on this side of the equation to the numerator on the other side. And putting this in our calculator will give us the answer. So in your calculator, you want to press um, this 1, then 0, of course, for 10. Then press the sign button. Then enter, right, enter 60, close bracket. Then you're going to press divided by, and then sign, and then press 50. Okay, you can have open and close bracket here. 
it will return to you the correct answer that you need. So let's put that in 10, sign, press the sign button, 60. And I'm going to close my bracket, ensure you close the bracket, then divide it by sign of this. Now, my calculator automatically, automatically put the open bracket, but it's always good to close that bracket. And then our answer should be 11.3. So A, so A, now this symbol means implies that. So it, this implies that side A is equal to 11.305, etc. But I only want three significant figures. So let's say they ask us to you know, determine the length of side A to three significant figures are correct to three significant figures, then we're looking at this answer here, the first significant figure, looking from, um, looking from uh, left to right, the first significant figure is one. The second will be th the one again. The third will be the three. So I'm going to chop off the other digits. Now the question is, for the last digit that I want, should we add a one to it or leave it as it is? Well, that depends on the very next digit. If the very next digit falls in the category of five or more, then we add one, two, three. But because zero does not fall in the category of five or more, we're going to leave three as it is. So it's going to be 11.3. So my answer is actually what? My answer is actually A equals 11.3 units. Now, I didn't put centimeters or anything. If this was 10 centimeters, then my answer would be 11.3 centimeters. If it was let's say 10 meters my answer would be 11.3 meters but since i didn't actually have a, a specific unit i'll leave it as 11.3 units whatever unit it will be it is in okay so that's how we find the length of a side using the sine rule now let's look at how we find the angles let's say if we want to find an angle and we have to use a sine rule okay how do we do that Okay, so let's look at that right now. Again, let's, let's say we do not know what is angle. Let's say angle A here, we do not know what it is. But we know the side it faces. Let's say this is actually 11 centimeters. And uh, so this, this is basically what? At the end of this line, we have one known and the other unknown. So for A, the side is known, but the angle is what? Unknown. First, to use either the B or the C's. We must have a full pair. The B, side B must be known, side angle B must be known. Or side C must be known and, ang and angle C must be known. So we have a full pair for either one of these two. Then we can use it against this half pair here. So let's assume that we know angle C to be, um, let's say, 29 degrees. And the side it faces down here, let's say that is... 13 centimeters so again we made an x correct however it looks it's next we have two lines crossing each other right but at the end of both lines let's see at the end of ends of this line we have two knowns in other words side c is known and angle c is known so we can match this with this so we can say a over sine of angle a is equal to side c over sine of angle C. Now, do we know A? Yes. A is 11. How do we know this is actually side A? Because it faces angle A. So it's going to be over sine of angle A. And in this case, angle A is marked as theta. So we could use A or theta. It would be fine. Because A is actually theta. But we need to know what the value theta is representing. What is the value that it's representing? Okay, side C is 13 facing angle C, remember sides on top, and then sine of the angle that 13 is facing. 13 is facing this angle, 29, so sine of 29 degrees. Okay, but we don't, we're not trying to find 11. We actually know this is actually 11 centimeters, correct? This is 13 centimeters. We want to find what theta is. Now, here's a nice way to do this. We can actually just flip. We can actually flip um, both sides. So we can actually put these guys on top, right, in the numerator and put these guys where? In the denominator. 
So in other words, we say sine theta over 11 equal, flipping this as well, sine of 29 degrees over what? 13. Now this makes it easy for us to compute. So just like we did in the previous example, we have 11. We're going to transpose it from the denominator to the numerator. So that leaves us with sine theta equal. The 11 is going to move from the denominator to the numerator. So it's 11 multiplied by sine 29. Of course, in your calculator, you know, it's easier to just leave it like this. You don't need to put times. It's still going to be times though. 11 times sine 29. But in your calculator, you can just put it as 11 sine um, 29 and then put out the 13. Again, where this 11 came from? From the denominator here. We transpose it from the denominator to the numerator on the other side of the equation. And so we can find finally find theta. What is theta? Theta, we need to get rid of this sine. So sine transposes over the other side as what? Sine inverse. As it'll be sine inverse of everything here. Sine inverse of the 11 sine 29 all over 13. Okay, so you can actually punch this in your calculator and see what you get. So now to get actually sine inverse though, on your calculator you should see this button. It should be shift. Either this or you should just see a second function button. What you're doing is actually you're actually shifting from the first function to the second function. So every button on your calculator, well not maybe not every, but some a lot of them, they have two modes right let's say one might be sine and the other is sine inverse so let's say this button here this button you see in the calculator that mark sine that's in the first functions when you press this button it's operating as sine but when you press shift notice that above sine you see on the panels a negative one at the top of sine this means the inverse of sine so to get this button here to operate not a sine but a sine inverse you need to press this this either this key either the shift key or the second function key, whichever you have on your calculator. So either one of those and then sign. And your calculator will actually return to you on the screen, sign inverse, All right? You should see something like this on your screen, sign inverse with an open bracket. So once you have that, then you can put the value in, 11, sign 29, you can put close bracket, close bracket here, then divided by, so you should be writing 11, sine 29 in your calculator divided by 13. So ensure that you have this part, please, sine inverse. And how we get it again? Sh the shift key or the second function key, then press sign and it will actually give display this on the screen. Right, this will be the display on your calculator screen. And then you enter this information here in it. And then close bracket. And then let's see if we got the same value. So let me do that right now. So I'm going to press second function. Okay, my calculator actually have shift. Then I press sign. It actually gave me this that I'm seeing on the screen here with the open bracket, as I mentioned. Then we'll put 11. Then I press sign. Then 29. Because actually I have an open bracket after sign. That's an open bracket after sign. And I press close bracket after the, I enter 29 then divided by 13, then close bracket, then press equal, and I get 24. So hold on, so theta equals 24.2, I'm sorry, <laughs> so 24.21887, um, et cetera. But now you might want to write up to three significant figures, right? Let's say they ask to write up the three significant figure. So from left to right, the first significant figure is two, the second is four, and the third is the two here. So I'm gonna chop off the rest. Question, do I leave it as two? So do I write my answer as um, theta equals 24.2 or 24.3? Well, it depends on the next digit. If the next digit falls in the category of five or more, we add one, but in this case we don't. So we're gonna put 21, 24.1 degrees. And that's the angle that we're searching for. So angle A here, which is, they give us as theta, is actually equal to 
So we can write angle C, A, B. We're going from C to A to B. Or we can say angle B, A, C. Let's use that instead. Angle B, A, C, which is really angle A because it falls in the middle, right? Which is equal to theta is equal to 24. 0.1 degrees. I mean, you don't have to do all this, but it's just showing you different ways of representing the angle.